All right, so here we're going to be looking at parallel lines with a transversal and the angle relationships of corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and consecutive interior angles. Now, we do see these parallel lines with transversals out in the world. Here we have the, in the ceiling, we have these rafters here forming parallel lines, and each beam would be forming a transversal. On the outside of the building, the, the grills on these windows here, parallel lines, and kind of this top trim piece here would be a transversal. Um, over here on the stairs, we have these rails forming parallel lines, and each post would be forming a transversal. We also th see these like lines in a parking lot or like on a football field or something like that. So here we have our parallel lines, and now a transversal is a line that intersects both lines. So there's our transversal there in purple. When we have a relationship or a diagram like this, it does make eight angles. On this top intersection here, we have one, two, three, and four angles there. And then this intersection down here is going to be another four angles. So a total of eight angles there. Now looking at corresponding angles, corresponding angles have the same relative position at each intersection. So if we look at this angle here on this intersection up here, we're going to be comparing that to the intersection down here and seeing which one of those match up or in the same position. So there's our angle and the angle down there in the same position right there. So there's a pair of corresponding angles. Now we do have four pairs of corresponding angles. There's a pair there. Uh, this pair kind of points up and left, another pair there. And then this pair points kind of down and left. Uh, you got to visualize it a little bit because it is uh, dealing with shapes. Let's look at some examples. Angle one and angle blank are corresponding angles. Before we really get going, we do want to make sure we identify the transversal. So again, the transversal is the line that intersects the other two lines. So there's our transversal there. Now we're looking at angle one and which angle is corresponding to that. So it's going to be five, six, seven, or eight. So we're going to look at these angles here and which one of those matches with that angle one. It is the angle five. So angle one and angle five are corresponding angles. Another example, if we know the measure of angle seven is 53 degrees, what's the measure of angle three? Well, there's angle seven, 53 degrees. And now here's angle three over here. And we're going to put that back on top, angle three. Um, and if you see there, the three and the seven and the 53 degrees all match up. So if angle seven is 53 degrees, three matched up with that. So three is also going to be 53 degrees. So corresponding angles are equal in measure. Another way of saying equal in measure is congruent. Congruence talking about the shape. Um, they're the same shape. Equal in measure is talking about the actual number value for the angle measure. Now let's look at alternate interior angles. So these are between the lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So when we look at our diagram here, we're going to ignore the exterior or the outside angles and we're only looking at the interior angles. There are four of them. There they are. And then also, so there's the between or the interior part of the name. Now the opposite or the alternate part are on opposite sides of the transversal. So for our alternate interior angles, we have two pairs of alternate interior angles. So there are between the, the lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Let's look at some examples of alternate interior angles. Angle one and angle blank are alternate interior angles. Again, our transversal right there connecting or intersecting both the lines. There's angle one and we're going to ignore the exterior angles and which angle is alternate to angle one on the inside. That's going to be angle seven. Next up, if we know that the measure of angle six is 153 degrees, what is the measure of angle four? Well, let's look at angle six right there, 153 degrees. Now angle four and angle six are alternate interior angles. And so if six is 153 degrees, so is angle four. Because alternate interior angles are equal in measure or they're congruent, they have the same shape. 
Now let's look at alternate exterior angles. These are all these are going to be outside the line, so not between, and also on opposite sides of the transversal. So we're going to ignore the interior angles. So that's going to leave us with four exterior angles marked there. Now that's the outside or the exterior part of the name. The alternate opposite part of the name is going to be on opposite sides of the transversal. So if one's on the left, the other will be on the right. Um, so we do have two pairs of alternate exterior angles. There's a pair there. They are pointing in opposite directions and a pair there. And again, that opposite directions, that's just to help us visualize where they are. Some examples. Angle eight and angle blank are alternate exterior angles. Well, there's angle eight. We're gonna ignore the interior angles. So the, the one that's uh, alternate to the angle eight is gonna be angle two. Now, if we know that the measure of angle three is 53 degrees, then the measure of angle five is what? So there's angle three, 53 degrees, and angle five all the way over here. These, these are exterior angles. And so if three is 53 degrees, so is angle five. Because alternate exterior angles are equal in measure. They have the same shape, they're congruent. Now looking at consecutive interior angles. So these are gonna be interior, so they're between the lines, and consecutive means next to. They're gonna be on the same side of the transversal. So we're gonna ignore those exterior angles again. Looking at the interior angles, we have four of them. And then, so that's the interior part. And then the consecutive part is they're on the same side of the transversal. So we have two pairs, there's a pair, and there's the other pair. So one of the side is on the transversal and then the other side is kind of going the same direction on the, the parallel or the pair of sides there. That one to the right, that one to the left. Some examples, angle one and angle blank are consecutive interior angles. Well, there's angle one. We're looking for interior angles, so we're not looking at the exterior angles. And so the, the other angle that's on the same side as the one is angle six. So angle one and angle six are consecutive interior angles. Now, if we know that the measure of angle seven is 53 degrees, what is the measure of angle four? There's angle seven, 53 degrees, and we're looking for the measure of angle four. Now, these are not congruent. Uh, this one is acute, this one is, is obtuse. So uh, they are interior angles, consecutive interior angles, and those types of angles are supplementary. Their sum is 180 degrees. If you add them up, it equals 180 degrees. So if we know one of the angles and we know that they add to 180, how do we calculate the other angle? We subtract from 180. So 180 minus 53 equals 127. So angle four, 127 degrees. So now that we've gone through the four angles or the four types of angles, pairs of angles, now it's time for the lightning round. It's 10 questions, 10 seconds per question. Here we go. Well, actually, before we start, this is the diagram we're gonna be using on the lightning round. We do want to identify the transversal. So again, the transversal is the line that intersects the other two lines. So that's gonna be the line in red there. All right, so here we go. Number one, angle four and angle blank are corresponding angles. Well, there's angle four. Now, on this intersection, now on this intersection, which angle is in the same relative position? Angle eight. They're both pointing in the same direction. So angle four and angle eight corresponding angles. Number two, angle eight and angle blank are vertical angles. This is not one we've dealt with today, but uh, vertical angles are the sides are rays and these rays are gonna be pointing in opposite directions. So angle eight kind of pointing down and to the right, angle six up and to the left. So angle eight and angle six, vertical angles. Next up, number three, angle six and angle blank are consecutive interior angles. So we have angle six here, consecutive interior angles, interior, so it's gonna be on the inside, three, four, five, and six, and it's gonna be on the same side of the transversal, so angle three. All right, number four, six and blank are alternate interior angles. Well, there's angle six. We're looking for an interior angle, so three, four, five, or six, and alternate, it's going the opposite direction or on the opposite side of the transversal. So that'd be angle four. Kind of makes a Z-type shape. 
And number five, angle two and angle blank are alternate exterior angles. So we're ignoring the interior angles, three, four, five, and six. And alternate going in the opposite direction or opposite side of the transversal. There it is there in purple, angle eight. Number six, if we know the measure of angle three is 120 degrees, what is the measure of angle five? Well, there's angle three in purple. There's angle five in red. We know angle three is 120. They are alternate interior angles, which are congruent, same measure. So it's also gonna be 120 degrees. Number seven, measure of angle five is 120. What is measure of angle four? Well, there's angle five in red and angle four in purple. What type of angles are these? Consecutive interior angles. These ones are supplementary. If we add them up, we get 180. So to calculate, we subtract from 180. So 180 minus the 120 gives us angle four, 60 degrees. Number eight, if the measure of angle five is still 120, what is the measure of angle one? Well, there's angle five in red and in purple, angle one. What type of angles are these? Corresponding angles. We know corresponding angles are equal in measure. So if five is 120, so is angle one. Number nine, measure of angle one is 130 degrees. What is the measure of angle seven? So there's angle one and there's angle seven. They are exterior angles, not three, four, five, and six. And they are on opposite sides of the transversal. So they are alternate exterior angles, which are equal in measure, they're congruent. So angle one is 130, so is angle seven. Number 10, if the measure of angle seven is 130 degrees, what is the measure of angle eight? Well, there's seven in red and purple is eight. These form a linear pair. So we have a line and then a ray going off of the line forming a linear pair. Linear pair are supplementary, same as the consecutive interior angles. So if you add them up, you get 180 degrees. So to calculate, we subtract from 180. So we take angle seven, subtract from 180, and we get angle eight is 50 degrees. Nice job on the lightning round. Quick recap here. Corresponding angles are facing the same way, same position. They are congruent or equal in measure. Alternate interior angles are on the inside or in between the pair of lines, and they are also gonna be congruent or equal in measure. Alternate exterior angles, opposite side of the transversal with that alternate word, and exterior, they're outside or facing the opposite direction. They are also congruent or equal in measure. And then the last one, consecutive interior angles. They are inside the line and facing the same direction or on the same side of the transversal. Kind of makes a U-type shape there. And these are gonna be supplementary. They add up to 180. Their sum is 180. To calculate one if you got the other, subtract from 180. So I hope this helps. I hope you have a great start to your day, a rest of your day or evening or whatever time you might be watching this.